Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, wherever this video finds you. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the first of, hopefully, a few tutorial videos on Foundry Virtual Tabletop. It's a virtual tabletop in the essence of playing RPGs online. I have been playing with it for about a month now. Been very happy with it. But uh, give a little bit of intro, uh, what's going on been uh, playing D&D &D for since I was a kid but then took a big break and then last year started some games with some friends here locally then the quarantine hit and had to take all those games virtual and with some friends out of the area so we started playing on Roll20 and played a couple games there enjoyed it Roll20 is a ton of fun had a had a blast I was just doing the free stuff but in, in the meantime, I was looking for other options out there, and I stumbled on Foundry, looked on YouTube, did not see a whole lot of videos, and then uh, found the Discord, found the Patreon, jumped on it, and basically fallen in love with it. It's a super fun, uh, super awesome uh, tabletop that's coming out here. It's in beta right now. So the goal of these videos is to really keep them short, uh, five, ten minutes, just kind of show off a, a few nuggets of information and I'll have links and description of and all that stuff in the YouTube uh, description here and there's not a lot of content in YouTube hopefully there'll be more as uh, people start adopting it and you know digging into it but if you have Foundry and you're trying to figure out what is it um, I'll give you an unbiased I'm not affiliated with the developer I'm on their I'm on the subreddit uh, Foundry uh, VTT. I'm also on the Discord server, but um, you know, and I pay for the Patreon. But I'm not actually, you know, in touch with the devs as far as working on it or anything like that. I'm, I'm a happy customer and probably will be purchasing it once it does launch. But uh, this is a, on runs on Windows, Linux, I think, and OS X, Mac OS. But I'm actually running it on Windows. And when you first open up, it's a Node.js for those technical side of the fence. It's a Node.js uh, Electron application. Uh, if you're not a technical developer, don't worry about it. Um, for those technical folks, there's come join us on the Discord. Tons of information there. But when you get it, and you're trying to figure out, what do I do? Uh, first thing you do when you open it up, you'll see this screen. And on your screen, it'll probably be empty because there is nothing going on in Foundry. And what you have to do is you have to create a world. So you have a couple different options here. You have a, a game worlds, so you can have different one shots, like I'm setting up right here, the Delian Tomb. It's a Matt Colville one here. Uh, finishing up a Lost Mine of Van Delver with a Wave Echo Cave with some friends, and then I have a, a test one as I play around. Game systems. I'm only playing 5e, but there are others, and you can install them. You can find the links on the Foundry Community Wiki. And the Foundry website, I believe, has some links. There are a couple of YouTube channels out there as well with some really cool information on that. Add-on modules. So when you first get the game, you'll probably just be, you know, playing with it basically and, and not doing a whole lot. But you will soon find out that modules that are all built, for the most part, by the community, uh, users out there that are passionate about it and have written stuff and there are some really cool modules I think at uh, last count I probably have 10 or 15, 10 or 12 and I'll do another video that actually kind of goes in details in what some of these modules are and, and what they can do then you have a configuration so when you first get it uh, you know the it runs as a standalone application on your desktop so if if you're playing locally in your house and people are showing up, you know, you can push it to a television or a monitor, kind of show it that way. But if you want people remotely to play it, you will need to host it, similar to Fantasy Grounds, uh, I think some others out there, unlike Roll20, which is hosted entirely online or Astral Tabletop. This one requires you to, you know, host it yourself. So there's a couple options there. Um, you know, administrative access key is just a security setting that you can set up a key so no one can get to your screen. The port, by default, Foundry runs on 30,000, but I'm doing some testing around with some other ports. I have it running off 33,000. 
uh, enable UPnP, uh, basically universal plug and play. It's uh, it's a technology, networking technology that helps devices find networking ports automatically. If you have a modern router, that is the way to go. If you're running beta uh, 5.3, which the current beta is 5.4, uh, the PMP will not stay set. You have to edit a file in order to save it, but we can discuss that a little bit later. Uh, the data path. This is where your data lives. Uh, Foundry on Windows, you know, for the by default stores in your app data. Uh, default world. So you can have, if you're only running one world, you could have something that would automatically start. Um, SSL. So I'm running some self-signed certificates with uh, Let's Encrypt. I'm a technology. I work in the technology world, so uh, running an, an a Let's Encrypt certificate was really easy to do. But that's a whole nother <laughs> rabbit trail. AWS, I have not hosted on AWS, but there is some integration. If you want to be able to save and host Foundry on AWS, you can actually go out there and do that. Then, of course, admin logout, you can save your changes. And then if there is a update, you would put an update key or and everything. Uh, depends what level of Patreon you're at. You can actually get a different uh, version of it. 5.4 is, um, um, excuse me, 0.54 is out right now. I do not have it. I'm not on that level of Patreon aspect. But to start off with, you know, if you're just playing around, you know, create a world. It's really simple. For as an example, you can just say, hey, my, you know, my world, the name of the data path, you can't change that. You can, you know, change what it is. So you can, from what your world title to what is actually saved on your hard drive. Uh, game system, because I only have D&D &D 5e installed, that is the only option that it will bring up. There's a Warhammer, there's some Pathfinder, there's a bunch of other stuff, but I've not really looked at them. Uh, background image. So you can choose a background image for your um, login screen, and we'll show you that here in a minute. So PNG, I think JPEGs also work. A next session date, you can just throw something up there, kind of like Roll20 has out there. World description uh, with a you know simple HTML. And then you can go ahead and create the world. My fun world. Here we go. And then boom, it's up. And then once it's then, you can now launch that world. One thing you'll see here, you'll see this thing called compendium. Um, within these worlds, there's uh, different compendiums that you can download content, whether it's 5e, you can import stuff from D&D Beyond. And it just lets you know that there are some compendiums tied into that. But for this example here for quickly, instead of jumping into my world, I'll show you what the intro screen looks like on uh, this uh, current world that we're, I'm about to, that I'm actually playing with some friends. We'll do the Lost Mine of Fandelver test one here. So this aspect, if you're hosting it, this is what your players will see. Actually, I don't have this one up with a background image. Uh, players will be able to access this from a browser, you know, a modern Chromium based browser, Firefox and Chrome work well. I don't know about Safari, Brave and others, but you know, you might be able to play and, and test them and, and stuff like that. I do recommend um, uh, putting in a password. It helps if I actually type in the right password. Now I'm playing on the desktop app and uh, some people play on the desktop app, others do it on the, um, you know, using a browser, depending if you're doing any integrations with D&D Beyond, you probably want to use a, a browser based aspect of things. We'll do a whole nother video that jumps into this. I'm going to actually exit out of this one and go back to the setup screen and actually launch my real one here because I actually have a background image. I just kind of wanted to show you what that background image looked like. So here you can kind of see I have the background image of the uh, Lost Mine of Van Delver. So when somebody shows up, they see it. It looks really, really awesome. And actually it shows if someone's logged in. So we had a game last night. And uh, before I logged in, it already showed me that there were a couple of players that were logged on and everything. But anyways, that's a really super high level quick video. It's just over 10 minutes, so I will uh, end it now. But we'll do another one where we dig a little bit more into some of the game systems and modules. 
But anyways, this is a super high level intro to Foundry and hope you like it and we will catch you next time.